Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah guys, what is going on? It's your brother Muhammad Al-Andalusi here, founder of AndalusiInstitute.com Today I wanted to make a quick video inshallah to point out a very simple thing that you can start doing in the beginning of your learning the Arabic language that if you don't do from the very beginning it will be really hard later on to put in practice and what this little thing will allow you to do is actually correct yourself as you are using the Arabic language whether it's while speaking whether it's while reading without harakat without vowels and this is what the students at AndrewsInstitute.com are doing and what I like to train them to be able to do because it's a skill that if you have you can later on become a independent student and correct yourself as I said <laughs> did you hear how he said Yansi and then he went back to the past and he said Nasia Yansa and that's because we have memorized it that way you see, when it comes to learning for the sake of competition, like practicing or working out for a for a competition, it's not the same as just working out for the sake of working out, for the sake of being healthy, right? So it happens the same with Arabic. Many times people don't know the right method of building vocabulary. They just know, sometimes they don't even know a method. And, and what happens is that they don't learn it for the sake of using it later on, to speak with it, to understand, to listen and understand at the same time to read um and the thing is you know you might ask okay why is vocabulary so important why is building vocabulary so important what about grammar what about morphology but the thing is that when learning language building your vocabulary is the basis of the development of all the other skills um you know whether it's reading comprehension listening comprehension speaking uh writing spelling the pronunciation as well and this is like a wise man once said he said uh, while without grammar, little can be conveyed. Without vocabulary, nothing can be conveyed because vocabulary is most of what we speak with. So how do you acquire new vocabulary? Um, the easiest way, I would say, and the most natural way is through reading and through listening. Okay, and that's how we acquire vocabulary in AndersInstitute.com. We first go over the text, extract all the vocabulary, memorize it, then meet up on a weekly basis to put all the vocabulary into practice. So that's kind of like our battlefield, right? Our competition, because we actually, you know, get ready throughout the week to go into the competition. So we pretty much use both ways, um, reading and listening. Now, going back to, to the one thing that you can do that will boost your progress immensely is it's so simple. And what you want to do is when when you are reading or listening, with the intention of learning the Arabic language, you want to take the past tense, present tense, imperative, and source, i.e. The, the name of the action. So, for example, um, you know, if you are reading and you come across dhahaba, right, which means to go. So, you write down in your notebook, dhahaba uh, yadhabu idhab dhahabun. So, here dhahabun would be the name of the action, which could be literally translated to uh, to go or that you know the act of going so if it's if it's a noun that you came across like for example baitun uh, you will go ahead and write down the plural of that noun in this case buyutun okay if you want to go an extra mile what you can do is actually write all the plurals of that particular uh, word so in this case baitun buyutun is the plural abiatun is another plural and for the words that have synonyms and antonyms you can add in your notebook those as well which will give you you know extra vocabulary that's what i did in the first year of uh, learning arabic like about a decade ago and that's why in, after 10 months i was pretty much uh to a level of fluency because i had too much vocabulary so you might ask right now okay but where do i find the past tense the present tense um the imperative of verbs how do i put it together how where do i find it right so I will show you a digital resource that you can use in order for you to start building your vocabulary in this way and you can have it you know stored in a in a uh you know in a kitab al-tabyid which is what we call in andersinstitute.com and you can from there start building your vocabulary and memorizing that vocabulary to the point where you know all the vocabulary that is in your own book in your own mental 
dictionary. So let's jump into the laptop and I'll show you this. All right, so here we are um, on Google. What you want to do is type Al Ma'ani, just as you see. So this is supposed to be Arabic, Al Ma'ani for the meanings is the plural for Ma'ana. And you go ahead and click the first one that will pop up. Um, now you want to go and search for the Arabic to Arabic one. This is a, an, a, a digital dictionary, like I said. So you go for the Arabic to Arabic. And let's say that you come across a word you're reading, right? And you come across a word that, um, that, uh, for example, the Haba, right? But let's say that you come across the, um, the, 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 um, the present form. So you, what you want to do is you go ahead and write what you seen in the text. Or what you heard on an audio. That's why, um, you know, you see reading and writing comes first, which is very simple. You could uh, learn that in, in less than two weeks. At least that's what it lasts. Um, our module inside of uh, Arabic, like an Arab, it lasts around two weeks to learn how to read and write. Now you go ahead and look for this. And you will see that most Arabic dictionaries, they are um, organized in a way where they give you the past tense, they give you the present tense, they give you the masdar, which is the, the sorry, sometimes as well they give you the actual amr, the imperative, as in the command, do this. So for example, dhahaba, past tense, yadhabu, he goes, present tense, idhab, meaning go, and dhahabun, meaning the the act of going or the name for the action right so here you have you wrote down yadhabu because that's what you came across on the on the text so you will find dhahaba you will find here yadhabu and what's what's most important is what is the haraka mainly for the three for the for the verbs that are on three um that have three letters which are the most basic ones, ذهب, it's not like istaf'ala or infa'ala or things like that. So, or other weights, what I mean. So the simplest one is the three letters, right? So the only thing you need is to know what, what harakah is in the middle of the, of the present, of the present tense. So is it yadhibu? Is it yadhubu? Is it yadhabu? So it gives you the harakah. That's why you don't see the other, vowels on the other, on the other letters because it's is i mean once you get into it it's pretty much obvious that is yad habu uh this how all the presents are balaga yab lugu faala yaf alu uh amila ya malu shariba yash rabu so here is the haba yad habu right then it gives you a master so the haban or the huban and here it gives you more advanced uh, um, forms of the verb or names extracted from the actual source of the verb from the haba like dahibun who's the person that does the action or the maf'ul which is like the the thing that is being gone to but this is a little bit more advanced we actually go over this after 17 lessons of Arabic like an Arab so even even in Arabic like an Arab we don't give this straight away for you to not yeah I'm saying this for you to not get confused with this so the most important part that you need to to look at here here it gives you a lot of um, a lot of uh, examples which is very good uh, to understand and to relate the context that you read and where you found that um, verb and and to relate it to to one of the contexts that gives you here because as you guys seen before uh, sometimes there is articles that goes with the with the verb right just like in English if, if you say I went to I went by I went with if you change the article it changes the meaning so it's the same with uh, with uh, with the Arabic language um, it's not the same as to say dhahaba ila than saying dhahaba bi right so um 
so here it gives you a lot of ex examples with different contexts and then if you keep going down it gives you other forms of you know derivate or extracted from the same three word root letters the ha ba okay so from here what you would want to focus on the most is this part which we've seen on to at the top of the page as well which is which is um the past tense so the haba then the present tense yadhabu and then the like i said sometimes it gives you most of the of the dictionaries don't give you the actual um uh imperative or the command of it because it's pretty obvious the only thing that changes is one letter so if to say like the command if if we are talking about dhahaba he goes yadhabu for you to say to someone idhab or go you just need to remove the ya add an alif and if the third letter is a kasra or a fatha like here then you will use the kasra on that alif so you will say idhab okay if he, if is a kasra like for example for example irsil irsil then you use kasra as well but if it's yablugh yablugh where the third letter is a dhamma then you say ublugh ublugh you will use on the first uh, alif a dhamma on it so so that's a little bit more um you know it, it doesn't give it to you here because it's very obvious once you know those those little rules that's why it's always better to learn with an instructor. It's very hard. I'm giving this to you guys and uh, for you guys to um, to do this on your own. But obviously, when it comes to learning Arabic, mainly in the beginning, in the very beginning, it's very important for you to have an, an instructor. And here you have as well the, 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 um, the imperative form or the command, idhab. إذهب فمن تبعك منهم فإن جهنم جزاؤكم. So this is a ayah from the Quran. It gives you examples from the Quran where that word comes from, uh, or where that word is is as well in the Quran. Now, uh, if this wasn't enough, I will show you guys another uh, conjugator. So in this website as well, this is called Cooljugator. So you write that. You write down Cooljugator.com. And you will come to this page and then you can write down here for example dhahaba to go and then it gives you it gives you different things it gives you the fun the phonetic uh, way for you to to know how to pronounce which you can display or choose to display or not so for example adhabu so ana meaning me adhabu and it gives you how to pronounce it here um, and as well it gives you so anti tathabu this is actually playing with the pronouns as well so this, this is a little bit of morphology but i was just showing you guys in in case in the almaani doesn't give you the imperative form command form and you don't know how to find that you can find it here if you come down here you come here in imper imperatives and it gives you idhab idhab and on top of that, it gives you, you know, it shows you how to use the pronouns, etc. But does a little bit more, um, more advanced and related to morphology. So I was just showing you guys how to extract vocabulary from a text and put it into a form of Kitab al-Tabid, as I show you guys, to actually start building some vocabulary. That's actually, if you start just building vocabulary, you know a lot of vocabulary like this. Like if you know, the habay, the habay, the habay, 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 means to go. And akala yakul kul, aklun, it means to eat. Shariba, ishrabu, ishrab, sharam, it means to, it means to drink. Nama, yanamu, nam, naumun, it means to sleep. If you build the most basic, the most basic 250, 500 verbs and, 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 um, and nouns and plurals this way, when preparing yourself to go to learn to someone or waiting for you to actually save some money to actually pay yourself a, a instructor or anything like that, it will save you a lot of time if you can actually do it. Now, let's talk about the nouns because I showed you guys, um, I showed you guys the for the verbs, which is the most important. 
and a little bit more complicated, but I didn't show you for the now. So let's say, let's take the same example that we took before, Beitun. If you come across Beitun and you tap Beitun here, it will give you straight away, it will give you straight away here, Beitun al jamu meaning the plural, Abiyatun, and as well, Buyutun, and as well, Buyutatun. Okay, so so these are the, all the different plurals. It is enough sometimes, mainly in the beginning, to just memorize one, one form of uh, of verb. However, obviously, as you progress, you want to build more your vocabulary and become richer in terms of, of vocabulary. So it's very recommended for you to go ahead and memorize uh, the other forms of vocabulary. So um, so this is... Um, this is what you can do in, in, in order for you to boost your building of the vocabulary of the Arabic language, mainly the very basic one in the beginning. And this is how it should go. This is the method to go. Like, I don't know any other method better than this. And I don't think there is, actually, because, I mean, there is the method of, like, building your vocabulary through learning um, uh, verbs and, and nouns, okay, that's known. But systemized like, systemized like this way, I have never seen it before. And all the other marakis, all the other centers of Arabic that are, that are, that are known in Egypt uh, that don't use this method, most of the times the students, they they not as sharp in terms of vocabulary than the other students. Um, they might be sharper in grammar, but as we said, you know, uh, while without grammar, little can be conveyed. Without vocabulary, nothing can be conveyed. So um, so most of the Marakis in the most known place to learn the Arabic language, like, for example, Egypt, most of the centers, they use this method. So I highly encourage you to use this method and to, um, and to apply it into your learning of the Arabic language. And if you are interested in knowing a little bit more about this method, this is the actual method that we use in andresinstitute.com. So I would encourage you to check out um, in the description below how to actually learn more about this method and how to actually, if you were to, uh, if you were interested in learning in, with us in, Ar in Arabic, like an Arab program, then go ahead and click the link uh, in the description and join the free webinar, the actual the actual webinar where I explain you the method and present to you the program is for free. Then the program, the 50 month program is a, is a paying program. So you can learn more about it through the link in the description. And I hope you guys benefited from this, um, from this uh, little tutorial, little video, little tip video. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.